The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today I'm channeling my inner filmmaking hipster. I found this ancient Super 8 camera in the trash and I want to make it working again but I also want to digitize it, so you don't have the hassle of using real film, which is crazy expensive. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So why is using real film so crazy expensive and how do I know that? Well, I bought the films for it. Those are 40 bucks a pop and the processing costs extra. So of course I'm a maker, I bought all the chemicals and tried it myself. Yeah, that didn't work out so great. I didn't even manage to process a single photo. But I still want to use a Super 8 camera, but without the hassle of analog film. And because I think others would also like to use their old Super 8 cameras again, so I try to make it a drop-in replacement for any Super 8 camera. Let's start with the concept. Every camera consists on the basic two things, the lens and the thing where the magic happens. And in case of an analog camera, it's this piece of film that has to be at a specific point inside the camera, the light hits it and then an image gets projected onto it and it captures it. And in digital cameras it's basically the same thing, but we replace the analog part, the film, with a digital sensor. And I figured the easiest way to do this is use a USB camera that has a decent enough sensor or a big enough sensor for the camera, because 8mm, which is what Super 8 refers to, uh, requires an 8mm sensor and I don't think we have that, but we will find a solution. To find a suitable sensor for my project I've taken apart a few USB webcams, but it turns out my best bet to make this thing work in time is use the Raspberry Pi camera module, which is already pretty compact and the actual camera itself isn't fixed to the PCB so I can put it at an angle because I need to get it at exactly the right position in exactly the right orientation inside the camera and I don't have much space. These Super 8 cartridges are not very big. Of course our project needs a brain and I've chosen the brand new Raspberry Pi 3A Plus which is very compact but has all the power we need and onboard Wi-Fi. You could use basically any single board computer for this project, but the A Plus has its advantages in being very compact, having onboard encoding, and it's also equipped with the Wi-Fi functionality, which I plan to use plentiful in this project. I started off by creating an enclosure in Fusion 360. This time we are doing it the other way around. First the enclosure, then the inards, because we only have limited space inside the camera. We have to make everything fit within that space. So I'm taking measurements of an original Super 8 cartridge, draw that in 3D, print it out with my 3D printer, and then we are going to align it inside the camera. So every part of this project has to fit within this tiny space, and I will use a little trick to determine the position of the camera. I shine light through the lens and mark the position inside the marker. This neat little trick allows me to determine the position of my image sensor relative to the cartridge. But turns out it's a little bit more difficult than I thought because we have to align it in every axis perfectly. And that's easier said than done. Positioning the image sensor is basically a game of trial and error. So I decided to do the electronics first, do the code first, get it just roughly positioned and then do the exact positioning afterwards. 
So we have to fit a lot of stuff in that tiny space. A single board computer, the camera, all the cables, GPIO cables, a battery preferably, and a power regulator. That will be a tight fit, but I try my best. Of course, we need a method of controlling the device. We can't use an external screen and a keyboard or a mouse. We need dedicated controls. So I'm rigging up some buttons and an LED to connect to the GPIO ports, solder all that stuff together, and we will access that with some code. Let's look at that now. Software-wise, this project is very straightforward. We have to set the Pi to some settings and we have to execute two Python scripts, one to make it shut down safely and the other one is used to control all the GPIO and do the image capture. The first script we are going to look at is shutdown.py. In the first row, we have to declare that we want to execute this script with Python 3. Then we import the OS library, which lets us talk to the Linux system, and we import rpi.gpio and call it GPIO for convenience. This lets us talk with the GPIO pins. We set them to BCM mode and set up a pin. It's pin number three, it's an input, and we want to have a pull-up. And this is a try accept loop, so we try to execute this piece of code and if that works, woohoo! And if it doesn't, we execute this piece of code. So we try while true, which means while this thing runs, we wait for the edge on pin 3 to be falling. This means when it's connected to ground, this part of the code will trigger. And if it triggers, we send an OS system command namely this one, which just lets the Pi shut down safely now. And if it doesn't work, we just clean up the GPIO pins, which means we put them all in known states and try again. The next thing we are going to look at is super8.py. We import rpi.gpio and call it GPIO as before. We import the time module, so we can use timing functions. And we also need the OS module. Then we set the GPIO mode to BCM again and set up three GPIO pins this time. The first one is an input, it has a pull up. The second one is an output and the third one is also an output, pins 4 and 14. So I once tried to use this function at this position, but it actually has to be down here so it won't interfere with anything else. This is our try loop and we try out while true means while we can detect this falling edge, which means if the pin is connected to ground, it triggers all the other events. So we wait for the falling edge, then we pull pin 4 high, which will activate the Super 8 camera. Then we activate pin 14, use this function to get a time and date code and use that as the file name video. Then we tell the Linux operating system to take a video with raspberry width with this specifications in 1080p and 25 frames per second. The camera itself records in 24 frames per second or less. So I need 25 just to avoid that the shutter and my recording is exactly in sync, which would result in a black picture. So I have to have a little offset. This will give some flicker, but we will see something for sure. And we also use this string we made earlier to give it a file name. The format is H264. And this means we do it for 30 seconds in a row. Then we deactivate the shutter of the camera and use the OS system to convert the video file we captured into MP4. So we take the same video file and put it in this folder with this new file type. And then because we don't need the H.264 file, we just remove it with this command. And then when all that is done, we pull pin number four low. This is the LED, the red LED that tells me that the thing is recording. And when this one gets Deactivated, I know everything is finished. I'm using this printout command just for debugging, so I know everything is finished even if the LED is not hooked up. And if that doesn't work, we just do the cleanup function like before. 
So you heard me talk about activating the Super 8 camera. Yes, we do that with the remote port of the camera. This is basically just an internal relay that gets triggered when a contact gets closed. So what we do is we use a GPIO pin to close that circuit. I tried it with a transistor, didn't work, but a relay works perfectly. All the functionality we use in this project is coded in Python. And to make sure that the Raspberry Pi executes all these commands on boot up, we have to edit the rc.local file. We add two lines. The first one tells it to use Python 3 because our scripts are written in Python 3. Specify the path where it would find these scripts and the AND symbol at the end. That's especially important because it makes this process run in the background and doesn't block the rc.local file from executing all the way to the end. The second one is also Python 3 and the path to the other Python script. This is used to make the Pi shut down on command. So to activate all the GPIO functionality we have seen in the code, we need some push buttons. So I'm soldering up a circuit for that, plug it in, put everything together and give it a test run. Funnel and Newark have these tiny relays that work with 3.3 volts, so you can directly connect them to the Raspberry Pi without damaging it. And they are so small, I was able to incorporate them into the plug that I used to connect to the camera. So I've done a little research and it turns out my system is actually compatible with all Canon cameras from the 70s that used the Type 6 or Type 30 remote. And actually, it's a very simple system and it's still used today. So you can adapt this easily for a lot of cameras that are out there. Even my 2012 Nikon that I used to film this segment right here is compatible. So I tried it out, everything seems to work fine, but the moment you activate the shutter of the camera, it shuts down the Pi, under voltage. So that's just not beefy enough to power all the things. But I haven't had more space inside the device. So to get a picture from inside the camera, I need to align it perfectly. And I don't have any wiggle room left. so. I have to revert to external power and I have to play around with the position and with the uh, mounting of the lens. So let's try out a lot of things until I get it right. Putting the camera in, taking footage, looking at that footage and guessing if it's right or not is very tedious and I don't even have a clue if I am remotely in the correct spot. So I have to find a way to stream the video directly from the Pi to my regular PC so I can see what the camera sees while I'm adjusting it inside the case. So to capture a video stream live from the Raspberry Pi, we use SSH to connect to the Pi and enter this command, which will open a video stream and put it to port number 3333. And then we use this other command to access that video stream with the VLC player, which we have to install first on my main computer. And now we have an extremely laggy, gruesome stream of the insides. The lag is about 10 seconds. Let's look at some footage that I've taken with the Super 8 camera in its new digital form. Keep in mind, Super 8 cameras do not record any sound in the original and so does my new version. But if they would record sound, you would only hear this.
So when the code gets executed, it listens for a push of a button. Then the recording starts and it activates the camera over this cable, which plugs into the remote port. I had to use a setting that gives me a very wide depth of field to get anything even close to focused. It's very hard to do that because the sensor is not at the exact same position than the original film was. It's basically a few centimeters away from that. So the markings on the camera for focusing do not make any sense. These are some issues I would like to address with a second version, a dedicated hardware for this project. Tell us on the Element 14 community if you would like to see such a project that takes a crude prototype to market. I think about making a kit of some sort that is compatible with any Super 8 camera. We have a dedicated space for your suggestions now, element14.com forward slash suggestion box. This is the place where your feedback counts. This thing turned out usable, not perfect, but there's a long way to go with this. All the files you need to make your own version are available at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. You can get all the SDL files, all the code, link is in the description. I gotta go to take some more footage with my new Super 8 camera and then another project is waiting for me.